Daily Bible Time. Good morning, it is Dominic Steele. Thanks for joining us. It is Tuesday morning, the 3rd of September, and we're picking up in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 19. And back in verse 17, Jesus had said, if anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether or not my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on his own. And, and really what Jesus was saying was, commit yourself to God, the God you read in the Old Testament. You'll see consistency in Jesus' teaching then, a beauty in Jesus' teaching. But if you're rejecting the will of God that you see in the Old Testament, then you won't make it to first base in understanding Jesus. Now, we jump down to sentence 19. And, well, 18 was he who speaks on his own, doesn't does that again, honour for himself. And, and really what was going on there was that... Um, I mean, Jesus was saying, if, if I speak, and I'm not speaking in line with the trajectory of the Old Testament, well, really, I'm, I'm just a big murderer of myself. Whereas, actually, if I'm saying what the Old Testament says, if I'm saying what the clear trajectory, if I'm saying the mind of God, then listen. Now, verse 19, has not Moses given you the law, yet not one of you keeps the law? Now, what's going on there? Jesus is saying to the Jews who are listening, the way to know the mind of God is to know and do the Old Testament law. And if you know and mind the mind of God, you'll see that I am from God. But he says, you don't, you don't keep the law. Moses gave it to you and you don't keep it. And I mean, if you look at the Old Testament law, just for a moment, you'll see one of the commandments is thou shalt not murder. And here are you guys. You're trying to kill me. Yet not one of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? Moses said, don't murder. And they're trying to do that. They're plotting the murder of an innocent man. They um, they don't know that this is their private... I mean, sorry, there are some in the crowd who don't know that this is the agenda of some of the Jewish leaders. And so they think Jesus has lost at verse 20. Your demon possessed the crowd, answered him. Who's trying to kill you? Jesus answered, verse 21, I did one miracle. You're all astonished. That um, That was not astonished wow that's amazing that's fantastic you're awesome but astonished outrage i mean jesus had done a miracle a man had been paralyzed 38 years he healed him but he healed him on the sabbath and they are outraged um at what has happened listen to jesus he comes right back at them in verse 22 yet because moses gave you circumcision checking circumcision um gee, it wasn't that Moses gave them circumcision. It came from the patriarchs. Yeah, you read right back into the Old Testament. Circumcision was before Moses. Genesis 17, circumcision was given. Uh, Moses' Old Testament law didn't come till Exodus 20. So actually, circumcision goes back before the Sabbath. Circumcision is about making perfect. Verse 22, Jesus says, You circumcise a child on the Sabbath. If a child can be circumcised on the Sabbath, so the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing a whole man on the Sabbath? Jesus is pointing out there's a precedent of you doing circumcision to make whole on the Sabbath. How much more a healing? The great significance of the healing was not so much that the man could walk, the man could work, the man could play soccer, I don't know, but that the crippled man could go into the temple the crippled man was now accepted by God. The crippled man was now right with God. Um, very, very superficial statement to attack Jesus for healing on the Sabbath. In fact, Andrew Barry years ago persuaded me that the Sabbath is not just a good day to heal. The Sabbath is the best day for healing. For the Sabbath is, I mean, the Sabbath, the rest day is the foretaste of heaven day. What better day to make someone whole than on a day when we're tasting heaven? Um, so Jesus, in exasperation, looks them in the eye and says, stop judging by mere appearances, make a right judgment. A right judgment doesn't come from an external thing. A right judgment begins with the choice to do God's will, to hear him, to read him, to mark him, to learn him, to, to question, to ponder. And you do that, it will be as plain as day that the Lord Jesus is from God. And it'll be as plain as day that Muhammad is not. Um, I do have a difficulty with the, the new atheists that they lump all religions together and they say that all are man-made and wrong. And, I mean, I, I do think uh, a, a faith system like Islam is man-made and wrong. But if you look at the Old Testament, you do the will of the God of the Old Testament, you will see that Jesus is from God. That's the big message of this part of the chapter.
of chapter 7 of John. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have revealed yourself over centuries and that we can trust you, we can trust your will, and that if we trust you and we attempt to do your will, we will see that Jesus is from you. And we thank you for that in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you.